I'm Jamie Franklin, I'm a landscape architect. Um, I'm the Vice President of the Ayla Queensland uh, Committee um, and I'm also the, the current Chair of the Sunshine Coast Ayla Sun um, Committee of Landscape Architects. I'm uh, the Placemaking Coordinator at Sunshine Coast Council um, and I am super passionate about the beautiful environment which we all have the pleasure of living in and working in on the Sunshine Coast. Hi, I'm Abby Carney and I'm a Senior Landscape Architect at Project Urban. I'm also the co-chair for um, the Australian Institute of Landscape Architects, QFresh. That's basically um, helping to create a community of young professionals on the coast, helping them um, research more and learn more about the profession. Uh, I'm super passionate about preserving the environment and, and also the importance of soil and biodiversity in that. Um, it's something that I do inside and outside of my job. I'm Carl Sefstrom, I'm a Principal Landscape Architect at Project Durban. I'm also an Ayla Sun Committee member and I'm on the Connection to Country Committee for the Queensland Ayla Chapter. And I am really excited when I get to work about creating better places um, and that's creating better outcomes for our community for the, our environment and really making a difference to the place that we all live in. Uh, the Ayla Sunshine Group has been going on for probably between 15 to 20 years. Um, when I first arrived at the Sunshine Coast, um, a gentleman named Stewie Blair um, was uh, the then chair of the Ayla Sunshine Coast. Um, the, what our remit is, is about the awareness and promotion of uh, the industry's issues and our profession's issues around um, landscape architecture, development, um, promoting you know, green infrastructure and um, all of those kind of elements. We have probably somewhere in around the 30 or so landscape architects on the Sunshine Coast um, who are registered or joined in with AILA. There's other landscape architects as well. Um, and it's a growing fraternity on the Sunshine Coast and you know, an important part of the uh, urban design fabric. Another important component of AILA Sun is to provide um, continuing professional development, CPD activities for members on the Sunshine Coast. It's often hard for people to get down to, to Brisbane or other areas for those events and so we as a committee create and generate events for our members to help with their professional development. We've actually got our first event coming up for this year which um, is very exciting. We're actually, um, it's going to be on soil and soil science, it's something I'm very passionate about, um, especially moving into the next 10 years and our climatic conditions and the challenges that that's going to bring. It's important that we really kind of enhance new members education around soil and the importance of it when we have developers spending a lot of money and putting plants in the soil it's not just about the plants it's about what's underneath as well so we have quite a few um, contacts and so basically we're just going to start that education from there and hopefully it will open up a few more doors for the, the younger professionals and they've got lots of questions to ask and from then that point on they'll start to harness those extra elements and take it forward into the design and the clients as well will notice a difference when we incorporate these new practices within the soil. Educating for climate change and understanding the impacts of climate change and um, what that might mean for our communities and um, the profession and, and how we might um, contribute to, to, to resolving some of those issues. Um, we also uh, have recently in, uh, endorsed a policy position around um, Indigenous culture and in the recognition, our RAP, um, Reconciliation, Reconciliation Action Plan. Landscape architects are involved in a broad range of um, areas from master planning you know, communities and um, subdivision areas um, right through um, to the design process and then the detail and documentation of in the fact that we'll design seats and 
you know, right down to the detail of the urban environment. So we're across a broad range of things that way, but equally environmental issues and the impacts um, of, um, you know, trying to push an agenda for tree shade, uh, green uh, infrastructure. And also this current, we're in a regional area, Sunshine Coast, um, it's developing and it's also about setting the policy position um, such as the, sun, the recent launch of the Sunshine Coast Design Book is all about advocacy for good design. So these are all things which landscape architects are involved with. So the, there's 10 principles um, which have come out of the Sunshine Coast Design Book and it was a, a fully uh, collaborative engagement with the development industry around uh, and the community um, around what are what is the value of good design on the Sunshine Coast and relevant to that. The idea is that those principles sets the benchmark for um, guiding design and development um, in a sustainable way and trying to preserve this unique character and wonderful lifestyle we have on the Sunshine Coast. Collaboration is really important, like you mentioned, and we need to look at design from a perspective of how we move forward with improving the way that we deliver things. Design is about creating better outcomes and there's a real opportunity, say, where we are today in the city centre, uh, future city centre, so it's brand new space and so we can really start from fresh, well, what's the better outcome? But any job that we approach, we can look at, well, what's the better outcome? And I think as landscape architects, we often sit over a number of professions and have an understanding about how they all interact. And so we're in a particularly unique position to be able to advocate for a, an agenda for better design. Because you'll find some professions are really good at responding to challenges. And if we can present a challenge to an engineer in, well, how can we do this better? And they'll rise to that challenge um, rather than maybe just accepting that, well, we've always done it this way. And so if we look at our green infrastructure in the cities and how do we increase shade and how do we increase the health of our trees in an environment that's mostly concrete, and we challenge them in, well, what do we do with the subsurface soils? What systems do we put in place? How can we achieve that canopy? And how's that going to interact with your pavements and drainage and, and whatnot? And so there's really good opportunities for landscape architects to drive those processes and make sure that our designs are better and improving the community outcomes. And that's something that I love about what Jamie's team does in, in placemaking at council. And we see across the coast award-winning projects and exemplary projects of how an urban space can become a real community space. Yeah, look, um, Sunshine Coast uh, you know, got a, a really good um, bag full of awards, won five out of 17 awarded um, uh, from the Ayla Awards. So that's a fantastic testament to this um, breed of landscape architects coming out of the Sunshine Coast at the moment. Um, the Sunshine Coast Design Book was awarded. Um, the Aerodrome Road intersection just down the road from here was awarded. Um, as well as um, Domic, which is a residential development by James Birrell, um, and also the Interurban Break by LAT 27, another important, uh, really important project for preservation of um, open space and, uh, and land on the Sunshine Coast, uh, making that separation from the uh, urban sprawl, which could happen otherwise um, from Brisbane. Also, Green Edge uh, Design Consultants um, won uh, an award for their um, playground design at uh, one of the uh, schools uh, locally as well. I think it's all about having that conversation straight up with the engineers and the architects and kind of laying down what you'd like to see optimally, you know, with the amount of trees, the amount of green spaces, yeah. just starting that conversation and helping them understand the importance of, you know, and value as well for the client and for the space, the community, the environment, and adding those extra green spaces from the start, and then we can 
peel back from there, really. You know, the coast to be successful, if it wants to have successful uh, um, mass transit corridors, it needs to have a, a denser form. Um, that denser form, you know, uh, we need to tackle medium density. And what does medium density look like on the Sunshine Coast? You know, what is that four to eight storey um, built form um, going to be uh, if we do have mass transit? And, and, and not only is it what, the, what is the form of the built form, but what are the spaces left the, the, for, for the trees and that, that deep soil um, to, to get that really good canopy growth, which um, we're applying to. So I think those are some real challenges um, for not only landscape architecture, but of all, all our professions of getting that right with the Sunshine Coast flavor. Uh, and I think we, we, we all intrinsically know what the Sunshine Coast character is and you know, the wonderful sort of um, work which has been done by some amazing architects um, before our time, the Kerry and Lindsay Clare, um, John Manwaring, Gabriel Poole. Um, they've left a great legacy for the Sunshine Coast and it's our job to actually ensure that we really add value to the, that work and ensure the Sunshine Coast is still this amazing place that respects nature uh, and its natural beauty first um, with the built form. And I think that's the, the starting point for our discussion with, with the rest of the design community and maybe something really important for the design series is to look at what, what is our legacy that we're leaving. We've, um, as a country, Australia signed up to the Paris Agreement, which is by 2050, um, zero emissions above um, what they were in 2008, I think it is. And how are we going to achieve that through good design? And we need to be looking at things that we are designing now will be active and alive in 2050. So is what we're designing now going to create that legacy of, of zero net emissions? Are we going to be um, carbon positive in our design? What are we doing with the work now to make sure that we are sequestering carbon through our planting, that we are at the embodied energy of the products that we're bringing in is reduced carbon load. So just to start to lead those discussions about where's our materials coming from, what's going to happen to this building when it gets recycled, um, that sort of discussion. But I think that discussion about legacy is, is really important. And we look back it's, we all in our studies, we, we study ancient histories and, and how they are set up and well, what, what's the legacy of what we're living behind now? Have we got that design format right? Is a sea of corrugated roofs the legacy we want to be leaving behind? We should be proud of now as it, as it stands, the Sunshine Coast always leaves an impression on people who visit because of our outstanding open spaces, parks. Mm. We have so much option. We, we can offer so much and that's been down to clever design through the times. Yeah. Really interesting point because I tried to raise that as an AILA representative um, with other like-minded um, people. Um, and it was interesting, the feedback was that the Sunshine Coast really doesn't have those same pressures that big cities have for the volumes which um, we could introduce. And I, and I say, no, that's, that's rubbish. We can do so much better. And this is a great time to springboard and leap off that to, to really great, great, um, much better connections for PEDS bikes um, and active transport. In high places, advocating for car parking and got to have the park out the front of my business well, that's not, going to, that's not the right um, outcome which we need to be seeking for our community here that's on the Sunshine going to Coast. What's really exciting about this new CBD is that it's setting an example for those things and that pedestrians will essentially be priority here over the cars and the car parks. That the people have been thought about first, I think that's part of, you know, certainly where, you know, um, in a placemaking world that you start with the community and their ideals and their values first and ask them what they love about the place and, and what they should, that they want to see improved. And then that forms your brief for design. Um, and I think, you know, we were touching on an earlier placemaking, the value of um, taking people on the journey in the various different disciplines and um, advocating for good design. And there's so many, you know, talented professionals, design professionals around here working in collaboration with each other and you know what's happening with this design series is a wonderful investment um, 
by um, the Met and Sun Central in, in really promoting um, good design. Um, so that's a fantastic initiative. I must make a comment about the Sunshine Coast and what draws people here and, and why I think there is such a great design pool of professionals here is that um, you find that they're very passionate and the reason they're passionate is because of the wonderful um, environment and the green and the blue all intermingling together, if I can simplify it as like that. Um, and, and I think that, you know, really um, people are so keen to, to preserve that quality in the urban environment. Landscape architects see themselves as stewards of the landscape and in that sense we're helping to maintain and uphold the environmental values and, and the landscape values. And you'll notice there's a real design ethos around the, the Sunshine Coast where there's a lot of native plants used, a lot of coastal species because like Jamie said, we love the environment here and we want to enhance that, we want to maintain the biodiversity, we want to, we want to provide habitat for the the fauna and Im improve opportunities for the flora to, to multiply and spread and so there's a lot of that on the Sunshine Coast and it's a real characteristic and you'll notice there'll be a different if a project's done up here by a Brisbane landscape architect, often the plant palette's different yeah. and um, which is quite an interesting observation to make once you've been here for a while. You know, community of communities rings very true for the Sunshine Coast and it's part of the ethos of, you know, understanding what the Sunshine Coast is about, is the individuality um, expressed in the communities about their views from whether you're living in Coolum, Noosa, Perigian, you know, down to um, Caloundra and, and uh, communities of the hinterland. The, we have a real variety of people and a real variety of character um, areas with the lowlands and the you know the salt marshes and what have you through to the riverine systems and then to the foothills of the Blackall Range and up into the escarpment you've got a real variety of of different um, vegetation types and typology and um, uh, and soils so um, understanding all of that is um, uh, really important to success of, of, of creating a really great place. Us being stewards of the landscape and the environment I think that's what's so amazing about our profession, what we do, is we have that opportunity to not only make people realise how important that connection to nature is, we can actually get them excited about it as well, because some people may or, or may not see it, but like I was saying before about the impression that Sunshine Coast leaves, it's because people really kind of love that connection to the nature, and that's what we love about our profession mm. too, you know. Mm. In um, 2018, uh, the Australian Institute of Landscape Architects developed its Reconciliation Action Plan. And so each state um, chapter has put together a committee to help implement that plan. And it's something that's really important to landscape architects that we acknowledge the traditional custodians and their stewardship of the landscape for tens of thousands of years and the relationship that they had with the land and that we, through our practice, can help to tell their, their stories, but also engage traditional owners in our work, and that we can look at how we can bring their knowledge and, and love of country into what we're doing and continue that knowledge in the community. Um, it's really important that that isn't lost. We've lost so much. Um, through the, the actions over the last 200 years. And I think there's a real appetite now for there to be a change. We had um, at our national conference, I think not last year, the year before, we had one of the elders put up their hand, said she'd like to have a yarning circle. And she was overwhelmed when there was over 100 people from the conference came into that room and wanted to participate in that activity. And so there's a real thirst uh, particularly from the younger generations about how we can engage and we've seen with the Black Lives Movement and what's going on that I think it's time that we all stood up and said that this is really important we can't overlook this culture and heritage which is all around us and has been here for so long um, and that we find ways as a profession to engage with that culture and that's what the like the Queensland Committee is really set up to try to do is help 
landscape architects understand how to engage with um, traditional owners and help to provide that connection to country.